On today's episode, we're going to talk about the elections, German elections. The federal vote is happening in six days, and with Angela Merkel stepping down as chancellor, all eyes around the world are watching Germany to see who will take her place. Even the U.S. is watching. So let's talk about it. Hello, Yin Lieblings. I'm Madi, science fiction and fantasy author who's been living in southern Germany since 2014. The federal election in Germany is happening on September 26th. Yes, that's a Sunday, because unlike the US and their attempts to keep people from voting by having their elections on a Tuesday, Germany always picks a day that ensures that everyone has the opportunity to partake in the democratic process, as is their right. Am I salty about it, America? Yeah, a little bit. Anyway, wow, that got dark really fast. <laughs> As I said, the federal election in Germany is coming up, and everyone is dying to know who will follow Angela Merkel as chancellor. I remember getting a phone call from one of my besties in the States a while back, and she was in a panic because she had heard that Merkel was stepping down, and she wanted to know what was happening. Why was she stepping down? I know from an American perspective, the idea of stepping down sounds ominous. We've only ever had one president step down from office, and that was Nixon, and it was because of the Watergate scandal. So you can imagine my friend's imagination running wild. No one steps down. In the States, you are either reelected, or you're not, or you retire. So if you step down, it's usually because of a scandal. With the elections coming up, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about the German elections and political systems because not only will it help my non-German audience understand this powerhouse a little better, but it also requires that I research. Before writing the script, I had an idea of how the political system worked, but I think I have an even better idea now, and let's hope I don't screw it up. Please chime into the comments if there is more information that should be expanded upon. I have gotten such great information from those in the comment section from other videos, so please keep them coming. We are all here to learn. Also, I will pepper in some of my opinions because as much as I try to get my facts correct, this episode is for entertainment purposes only, and I'm a smart ass and can't help myself. So let's begin with the parties to look out for. First, we have Merkel's party, the conservative CDU, or the Christian Democratic Union, as well as its Bavarian counterpart, the CSU, or the Christian Social Union in Bavaria. With Merkel stepping down, the new leader of the CDU and candidate is Armin Laschet. The leader of the CSU is Markus Söder. While there are two leaders, because usually the CDU and CSU are kind of like bonded together, They've had to hash it out pretty harshly for the candidacy, and Lachet essentially came out on top and not Soto. Next, we have the center-left party SPD. I very stupidly misnamed SPD in my healthcare video. I had originally called them so the Socialist Party of Germany. It's actually the Social Democratic Party Deutschland. And I am so sorry that I didn't take the five seconds to just do my due diligence and make sure that I got my facts straight. I put that video out about a year and a half ago and I still get comments correcting that mistake as if I am unaware of this and I can't correct the videos, folks. Like, I know. <laughs> I put in a comment recognizing my mistake, but of course no one reads it and the internet is forever. So let this be a lesson for you guys. Do your research. <laughs> it will continuously bite you in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, rant aside, the SPD is helmed by co-leaders Saskia Esken and Norbert Walter Borg Borjans, Borjans. But the candidate is actually Olaf Scholz. The Greens slash Alliance 90, the environmentalist group that actually is the main group here in Baden-Württemberg. Um, at the moment, it is helmed by both Annalena Bayerbock and Robert Habeck. And Annalena is also one of the candidates who could possibly be the next chancellor. This is the first time that the Greens are in a position where they have the possibility of having a chancellor and upending the tradition of the chancellor either only ever being from SPD or CDU. So I think it's really interesting to point that out. 
Um, and also the fact that the Greens picked someone with like no political experience, but big ideas. So I'm, in, I'm intrigued on where that's going to go. Then we have the extreme left known as the left or the Linke. Yeah, it's real original, I know. But anyway, they're helmed by Janine Wiesler and Susanne hennig Velsau. Then you have the FDP or the Free Democratic Party, which is center to center right and pro-business and kind of gives me like a bit of a libertarian vibe. And that's, but that's my opinion. It is helmed by Christian Lindner. And finally, AfD. Alternative for Deutschland. It is the far right populist movement. Now, I do want to point out, this is where we get into opinion territory, but um, that their mouthpiece is Alice Weidel, who is a lesbian in a civil union with a Sri Lankan born Swiss film producer and has adopted two children with her partner. And I say this because I would love to know someone's hot take on the mental gymnastics Alice had to do in order to justify being the mouthpiece to a party that is anti-LGBTQ, anti-immigration, anti-gays, adopting children, and to put it simply, pro-women. Going back to the kitchen where they belong, obviously. <laughs> Literally, like, everything about her is the antithesis of the party's ideas. Ugh. I mean, I'm sure somebody's going to say it's because of all the other policies that they have, but I can't think of any policies that would be good enough to ignore the fact that their other policies of the party is essentially, like, to keep me from being able to live my normal life. I don't know. So, Someone please tell me because I can't wrap my head around that one. But, you know, anyway, I know I have only briefly gone over these parties. If you do want more information, fellow expat and YouTuber Haley Alexis is actually doing a series as I speak where she devotes an entire episode to each of the parties. And it is really informative and entertaining. I will link those episodes below as well as update them um, as they as they go, because I think she's still ongoing. It's really good. Highly recommend it. But that's not all. Over the last six years, there have been as many as 74 parties in Germany, including the Pirate Party, which is awesome. The Pirate one, I mean. I mean. <laughs> but in the Bundestag, they've only had as many as 19 parties. So anyway, so with the whole thing with this party's bit, how does one win a majority? Well, they don't outright win a majority. They have to form a coalition with at least one other party, sometimes multiple. And this means actually working together with another party to find common ground and, dare I say it, compromise. <gasps> Lord, what a newfangled concept. <laughs> the current coalition is actually referred to as the Grand Coalition, meaning CDU slash CSU has partnered with the SPD. Other classic coalitions are named after the colors of the parties. So you have red green, which is a combo of SPD and green. There is black yellow, which is the combo of CDU and FDP. There is also a Jamaica coalition, which is CDU, FDP, and green, or a Kenya coalition, which is SPD, CDU, and green. There's also a traffic light coalition, which is SPD, FDP, and green. <laughs> it's interesting, right? All right, so now that we know about these coalitions, and we'll get more into that in a moment, let's actually look at how the German political system is set up in regards to this election. So, just like the U.S., Germany has three branches of government, judicial, legislative, and executive. The legislative branch in Germany, like the U.S., is also divided further into two parts, the Bundesrat, which is the federal council, and the Bundestag, which is the federal diet. Yeah, diet. That is the actual translation, folks. Don't at me. However, Germans only directly vote for members of the Bundestag. So we're going to focus on that. Think of the Bundestag as the House of Representatives in the U.S. or the U.K. House of Commons for simplicity's sake. There is a base number of 598 seats in the Bundestag and Germans are asked to give two votes to fill these seats. On one side of the ballot, Germans are asked to vote for a candidate in their constituency, like an American voting for their candidate running for their district. There are 299 districts in Germany, and those districts aren't redrawn like they are in the U.S. They are set. Yo, I am salty. <laughs> Woo! 
calm down. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, with 299 districts, that makes up at least half the seats of the Bundestag. So what about the other 299 seats? That's where that second vote comes in. The other half of the ballot asks Germans to vote for a political party. Okay, this is where things get a little squirrely. The way the voting works, more often than not, there ends up actually being more than 598 seats. So like while the first vote determines who specifically will get a seat, the second vote in conjunction with the first vote kind of determines a percentage of seats that each party is allowed to have in the Bundestag as a whole. And that does mean that those direct votes, like I said, those direct votes from the first vote are kind of included in that percentage. So like, as a result, it, it can mean that one party can be strongly represented, then they should be based on the proportion of second vote. It, yeah, so and in the case that the percentages work out that you that you need more than those 598 seats, uh, Germany also has overhand and balance seats that sit above parliament and act as extra seats to help balance out the percentages from the votes. For example, after the 2013 elections, there were actually 631 seats in the Bundestag. So how does that work? So uh, the thing is that when it comes to voting, what is common, what, what can happen, for example, is a German can vote for a candidate who's from one of like the bigger parties, say like CDU, CSU, but then could vote for the Greens in general as the party for their second vote. I'm not saying this is how I would vote. It's just, uh, it's just an example, guys. And what could actually happen, it ends up throwing off the balance of seats in the Bundestag. So like if someone votes for CDU, CSU candidate and the party as a whole, then that kind of counts like towards that percentage. So like, say, for example, CDU gets 32 percent of the votes. That percentage is a combination of direct votes of like specific candidates as well as overall party votes. Then the number of seats in the entire Bundestag for CDU has to reflect 32 percent. That's what I'm trying to say with the two, the two voting thing. Like one vote ensures that that specific candidate will have a seat in the Bundestag and the other one will just help figure out what is the proportion percentage of the parties, you know, based on for the whole country. And I'm not entirely sure I'm, <laughs> I'm explaining this correctly. It makes sense to me. I think it, it, yeah, it makes sense to me. I just trying to make it make sense to the rest of you. <laughs> Still better than the electoral college. <laughs> So in the end, whichever party has over half of the votes of the Bundestag then gets to vote for chancellor, like the party itself. I mean, the you know Germans know who the candidates are from each of the parties, but they didn't get to choose who that candidate was. The party got to choose. And because of so many parties, since you know that means a simple majority isn't always possible, um, the parties of the Bundestag then have to pull their votes together to create a coalition that pushes them over 50%. There is also an important 5% rule. A party has to receive a minimum of 5% of the popular vote or at least three candidates, like direct candidates, in order to be allowed to have a seat in the Bundestag. This law was put in place to keep smaller splinter groups from being able to enter parliament. While it is important to have more than two parties, there is still also such a thing as too many parties. Apparently, this was a problem during the Weimar Republic. There is also the argument that this law was put in place to keep fringe extremist groups from entering parliament, like the Nazi party, because they were able to get into parliament in 1924 with only 3% of the votes. And then, well, as we say, the rest is history. Once the chancellor is elected, he or she then creates their cabinet filled with federal ministers in a similar way that the U.S. president picks their secretaries. Chancellors serve four-year terms, but there are no term limits. U.S. senators and representatives also don't have term limits, but the U.S. president, as of 1947, they are only allowed two terms. So, like, our first president, George Washington, had set the tradition of aiming for two terms, but it wasn't until Franklin Delano Roosevelt won a third and fourth term as president that Congress started to get a little antsy and then ratified the 22nd Amendment, which then limited the president to only two terms. On the other side of the pond, Angela Merkel has been chancellor for four terms. That's 16 years. The woman is tired. 
and wants to retire from politics and has even mentioned possibly going back to academia because she's got a doctorate in quantum chemistry <laughs> and has worked in research for many years before getting into politics. And you know what? Good for her. Good for her. The only other chancellor up to this point to hold office for this long was Helmut Kohl, who also only ever stayed for 16 years. So, who do I think will be the next chancellor? I have no clue. <laughs> Most of the Germans I have been talking to are also watching with anticipation. No one seems to be really enthusiastic about any of the candidates. I'm, and I'm not saying that like all Germans are feeling that way. I'm only talking about like the small group of Germans that I have spoken with about the election. So anyway, there's there's actually more to how the German government like is set up and everything. But I hope this helped explain how like, you know, the elections coming up this Sunday, how they're going to play out. To make sense to the rest of y'all. <laughs> What do you think? What are your thoughts on how the system works? Do you find it more complicated or easy? I definitely find it interesting. I like learning how other countries set up their government. Let me know in the comments below. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there's a certain topic you would like to see on this channel. If you want fun escapism and political intrigue, my Space Fantasy of the God Queen and its sequel, The Last Imperator, are available in ebook, paperback, and hardback. I have all the links in the description below. If you sign up for my newsletter, you'll get a free short story as well as some behind the scenes goodies. And don't forget to connect with me on social media, whether it is through Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and also TikTok. And that's it. Until next time, adieu!